Peace, people. It's me, Arlene J. Ramsey, CEO and founder of Everyone Let's Talk, also your favorite self-wealth mentor. I'm going to lend my opinion about um, George, George uh, Floyd, the current events, and some things that Candace Owens has said. Um, uh, now, I just love the way how the world is acting in unison. All right, this is a nationwide and worldwide protest that we are witnessing in history, the year of 2020. This is um, half of the year. We're in the month of June, all right? And um, we are watching a world who are on the side of righteousness and justice, all right? Don't you ever forget that, okay? Don't ever let someone tell you that your protest and your outrage or your outcry is wrong because we need the United States to change the laws that exist and we also need that the United States to start treating African Americans as human beings. All right, um, there are some people who are talking about conspiracy theories and um, how people have actually planned these protests because they want a new world order. Whatever, whatever that may be, whether that's true or false, we, we don't know that to be true, all right? But let's not negate or don't lose sight of the fact that George Floyd, while in police custody, died by officer, by officer Chauvin while he was in handcuffs on his belly saying that he couldn't breathe begging and crying for his mother we watched officer we watched officer chauvin place his knee rest his weight while his hands was in his pocket on george foreman's of i'm sorry george floyd's neck until george floyd passed away let's not lose sight of that okay um, we cannot control people who organize on top of what we've organized or organize on top of our protests. We have no control over that. What we can do is not follow actions that are not in alignment with our initial plans. Do not follow those actions, okay? That, let people who, who choose to behave the way they want to behave, which is not in alignment with what your initial intentions are, let them do that. You cannot control that. And that happens time and time again, all right? So we can't control that. In order to control that, that means that we shouldn't protest, we should just stay home. But we can't do that, can we? Because racism still exists. Black people are still dying in the hands of um, police custody or being mistreated while they're in police custody. So this protest was fitting for the year of 2020. Don't lose sight of that. There are many people that are antagonizing the issue or telling you that you're stupid or criticizing your behavior while they sit at home and do absolutely nothing. Just know this, that all the laws and all the changes that we're witnessing today has everything to do with your actions and not the criticism of the naysayers. Understand that. Because had you stayed home, had you not protest, had you not outcry, nothing would have been done. There would have been no changes and we would go back to the regular schedule understand that okay so uh let's talk about candace owens for a minute you know i always have to say candace is very intelligent and she's very well spoken okay very well spoken um some things i agree with and i always say that the black community respond to everything via emotionalism i've said that here on youtube i've said it on facebook i say it in personal conversations we have to learn how to fall back from responding with emotion for everything that has happened and we should be looking into other aspects of a situation uh, we should also understand that other opinions and other respectives are important and they matter all right we have a bad habit of doing that and that gets us no way nowhere we'll never win um, having a one-track mind point of view or only limited to accepting the perspectives to which we already know. That's not how the world works. Look how big this world is. This world is full of millions of people. There's so many people with so many different perspectives. All right, let's look at all the people. Let's, let's look at, for example, look at the people that are successful that you know. When you listen to their success stories, their success stories aren't the same. They haven't taken the same route and they don't have the same perspective. You understand? So we have to learn how to look at the world in that way. So when we're looking at problem solving, and challenging issues or trying to find out what the issues are we need to learn to accept all aspects and perspectives of a thing so that we can find a, a solution a common uh, uh sorry that i don't know if that was a b or not so that we can find um 
let's say, a holistic solution to the challenges that we have been facing. All right. Um, before I get on Candace Owens, let's talk about the biracial community. Um, we have to, or I should say, I should say we should, at this point in time, learn to accept our biracial community for who they are. They are biracial. And I'm specifically speaking for those, to those who are half black, half white. All right. We need to hear their voices. Um, a lot of our biracial community have been silent. They're either indifferent or they're just silent when they want to speak out. And that's because the black community forces them to not acknowledge their white, the white side of them. So for the person, let's look at Alicia Keys, for example. Although her father is black, she, she was raised by her white mother. Her father wasn't in her life. So how do you want Alicia Keys to not acknowledge her mother, the person who raised her? So she's more aware of her white side of the family than the black side of the family. You understand what I'm saying? So you're asking those people to give up a lot. That's who they are. And we don't care about what the slave master said back in slavery what that one drop of black mean that you're black we have to learn how to start dropping that those were just um manipulative tactics and sayings for why you're going to be a nigger or why you're going to be a slave or why you're not going to be respected or treated as a human being by me that is just something that another human being said to make those people feel less than or have to accept the fact that they're going to be treated less than it's time for us to stop acknowledging those things we understand that they exist but we have to do things to start changing the narrative and we also have to do things to start you know changing how we treat ourselves how we view ourselves and how we want the world to view us and that's going to start when we stop implementing the old teachings of the slave masters okay so in that sense let's give the biracial and what I mean by biracial, when it comes to this racism, specifically black, um, half white and half black uh, uh, people, or let's just say all, let, let's, let's specify, let's say the, the biracial community, let's respect and allow them to accept their, the other side of what they're mixed with. And when once they feel comfortable with this conversation and comfortable with this plight, and comfortable with knowing that they're not going to be bullied and dragged for their opinions they're going to get more involved we're going to hear more from them you understand okay it's not you, you lose your feelings lose the fact of wanting to make everybody black everyone is not black it's it is it is time that we stop trying to badger and bully people to accept the narrative just so you think that that's going to help you in the fight it is actually doing us more harm because we're speaking things that are not true only from our feelings you understand all right now getting back to uh candace candace has said some things that george floyd is not a martyr and how she dug into george floyd's um, past what kind of person he was and that when the officer um searched him supposedly there was a white bag full of crack cocaine or whatever those are some those are the words that came out of her mouth where there was a bag and it was like some white white substance in a bag I'm not sure how true that is, but I'm going by what Candace Owens said in her recording. Now, it's okay if Candace Owens wants to dig up George Floyd's past. However, this nationwide and worldwide protest is not only about George Floyd. We have Breonna Taylor, who was just killed um, a couple of months ago. And we also have Ahmaud Arbery, in which she said some things about Ahmaud that I didn't agree with. And let's just say it's okay for her to dig up his past, because that's what Candace wants to do. I challenge the fact that she didn't dig up Officer Chauvin's past. He has 18 or 19 complaints about him from that police precinct of him abusing his power, and that police precinct has yet to hold him accountable. Why hasn't uh, uh, Candace dug up his past, nor have Candace chosen to hold that police precinct accountable for not holding George uh, Officer Chauvin accountable? Those are the things that I'm challenging. The other thing I'm challenging is that Candace decided to change the narrative of this entire protest by calling George a martyr and saying that she doesn't support George. She said that he doesn't deserve, he didn't deserve to die, but she vaguely said that, all right? I've heard it. 
she didn't she didn't stress on the fact that he didn't deserve to die she vaguely stated it and stressed on the fact of the type of character that he is now let's say george was a criminal okay that shouldn't matter so long as once he's in police custody and he was handcuffed and put on his stomach all of that shouldn't matter the police officers should have take, booked him and allowed the law to work its process opposed to taking the laws into their own hand or killing yet another a, another black man thinking that he was not going to be held accountable by killing this black man those are the things that the whole world is looking at which candace owens does not focus on now i get that her tactic is to get the black community to stop responding via emotionalism However, she's not going to gain the majority of the black air of the heirs of the from the black community because she's deliberately dismissing certain things that are done by the white community against black people. Now, she says racism doesn't exist. This is not the 1950s. Um, can, uh, you know, Candace Owens tell a Ku Klux Klan member that um, or white supremacist um, groups that racism doesn't exist? You know, those are the things that we need Candace Owens to at least address a little bit more and balance out her message if she wants to gain more black followers or more black supporters. Let's just say that because black people follow her just to disagree with her. But if she wants to gain more black supporters, and I'm not saying that Candace should say things that the black community wants to hear. Because I don't say things that the black community want to hear. I say things that the black community need to hear and that all communities need to hear depending on the respective topic. All right. So we don't want to, you know, digging up a person's past after they've been killed by a police officer or apprehended by a police officer and mistreated is null and void. You know, that tactic is only used so that the community or the world that's watching won't have empathy or won't have some type of rage or feel some type of anger towards how that black person was treated. That has happened time and time again where that tactic is used um, to just sway people from actually supporting or standing on behalf of the rights of the person that they are assassinating the character of. And I'm saying that this does not work for the black community who does not respond via emotionalism. All right. We see very well many angles to a thing. All right. Understand this. The people who are actually telling you that protesting or a peaceful protest is the only way to go obviously have not been paying attention to history. We have had so many peaceful protests. However, police brutality has continued to go on over the years. Now, many things have changed for black people over the years. I'm not going to say that it hasn't, right? We have um, police officers that are wearing cameras. Um, we have Newark, New Jersey, who was uh, created a civilian uh, review board. And that board is so that um, appointed uh, citizens or residents of Newark, New Jersey can actually review cases and hold police officers accountable. However, that re uh, review board has not been passed yet because we need the Supreme Court to actually pass that law. There are so many, so many changes that has happened from peaceful protests. So I'm not going to say peaceful protests has done nothing. It has done a lot. Um, we, 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 we've seen that with Martin Luther King era. However, what we're talking about is police brutality. And we're actually talking about the extent of black people either dying or being physically mistreated while they are in police custody. That has not changed. We have seen police officers, we have um, gotten notice that police officers have turned off their cameras only to go and do things that they should not do to a person that is black so that it is not recorded. So it, it, it almost comes as if having the cameras and having everything shown on that camera means absolutely nothing because those police officers are not being held accountable. And those are the things that the, this world and this nation is marching for. We're actually saying that don't tell us that you are implementing these things and police officers are still finding a way to not to, to not be held accountable for their actions because that is blatantly saying that they don't respect the the new laws that are putting pla put in place to actually calm down or soothe the public. You get what I'm saying? 
what law enforcement in the world or people in, in high places of leadership have to understand is we put our trust in you because you're doing the law, you're creating the law. So we put our trust in you when you tell us that a new law is in place and we have hopes that you're actually going to implement them and you're actually going to do right by those laws. But when we see time and time again that you implemented another structure, yet that structure is not working for the people that it was meant to work for, we have questions. And so at this point in time, the world is just fed up of just hearing the same bull crap time and time again. It is bullshit and we're tired of it, okay? So as far as Candace Owens, I would respect Candace Owens more if she would address the people who make racist remarks against black people after black people, black people have been um, killed in the hands of police officers. Like I have seen countless people talk on white people express how they're happy that Officer Chauvin killed the, uh, George Floyd. Uh, one person called uh, George Floyd a piece of shit and that he hoped George Floyd did not bl didn't breed, meaning hope he didn't uh, have any children. Well, I question how does he know that George Floyd is a piece of shit? Um, how and why would he not George Floyd uh, to have any children? You know, so Candace Owens does not address things like that. I don't know if she doesn't see it or she deliberately doesn't want to address it, but her focus is too much on the black community and what the black community is doing wrong and not a balanced message of, well, the white community can change a little bit of what they're doing as well. Um, she doesn't all, she also doesn't understand that she plays that game, that political game well. All right. So when you play that type of game, obviously you're not going to be a victim of the same things that everybody else is a victim of. But what she's not understanding or realizing is you're actually pushing another message of my game is the only game to be played. So either you play the game my way or you get punished. And that's not the world that we want to live in. All right. We have people who want to just live in peace and live how they want to live, provided that they're not breaking any laws or doing anything to harm other people. They should not be punished or killed just because they don't play the game the way a certain group of people think that they should play the game. You understand me? Everyone should just be allowed to be themselves and do themselves. And that is what Candace Owens is not addressing. I don't know if Candace Owens was to behave authentically herself, would she be this confident to speak the way she's speaking? You understand what I'm saying? Candace Owens knows that she's not going to do anything that will cause her to get pulled over by the cops or anything like that. She's paying very close attention to how she behaves and how she presents herself in public because she doesn't want to get pulled over by the cops, right? So uh, if, if you know that you have to you know, straighten yourself up or, or, or behave a certain way so that you don't have to have any police encounters, Candace, then that is a problem. That is a problem. A lot of black people are afraid of police encounters because they don't know how it's going to happen or how, what's, you know, what's going to happen or how it's going to turn out. Now, as for me personally, I've had so many encounters with police officers of all types and all backgrounds. And I'm going to say 95% of the times my encounters have been positive. My encounters have been positive. I've gotten tickets, not gotten tickets, or I've even gotten tickets for, for issues just for me to come to court. And on the court date, on that court date, it is, I've gotten tickets for me to come to court. And the, the saying is, hopefully you'll have everything taken care of by that court date. And all you have to do is show the judge that everything is taken care of by that court date and everything will be dismissed. And all you have to do is pay court fees. And I've done that. That has happened with me a, a, a couple of times. So I personally have not experienced racism or have had too many you know, bad encounters or terrible encounters by police officers. So this video that I'm creating is not from my personal experience because my life is fine as far as that is concerned. I have no issues. However, I'm looking at what's happening with my black brothers and sisters in the world and I have a problem with it. Like Breonna Taylor was killed in her sleep. That doesn't make sense. 
So you're saying that we can't sleep? And of course, the black community got, got to get rid of victimhood. At, at, at no point do I ever consider myself a victim. And that's exactly why I have great police encounters, because I present myself. First of all, I respect the police officers whenever I have an encounter. I don't have ridiculous arguments with um, police officers. And I'm not saying anyone else has a ridiculous an argument. So please don't take my words out of context. I'm just speaking for myself. For myself, if, if something doesn't make sense, I don't do it. So I, I, I don't do anything that doesn't make sense for me to do, right? So in that sense, my encounters are a little different. However, you have people that have so many different things going on in their lives. They may have just lost a job. They may have, they may have found out that, you know, someone has a terminal illness. You know, they may have gotten divorced. They just had a bad day. You just never know what the issue is. And then when they get pulled over by a cop and they think that, they don't have a reason for getting pulled over. That's where their, their their rage and their uncomfortability comes from because they feel like they're being attacked from every aspect of the system, and they're not getting a break. And it's so and living is pretty much unbearable for some people. They're struggling to take care of themselves. <laughs> you know, you know they they don't make enough money on the job. They have to work for overtime, and in working overtime, they're still struggling to make ends meet. They can barely live a comfortable life. And then on top of that, they have so many different issues that they're dealing with compounded on top of uh, just on top of everything that sometimes people are just fed up. And th that is their response when they get pulled over by a police officer because what they're thinking is this may be another ticket. This may be something else that I have to, you know, where I have to come out of my pocket and pay for something that I can't afford. So they're just frustrated when they're having these these encounters. All right. Um. That doesn't mean that the police officer need to mistreat them or kill them or beat up on them, whatever the case may be, while they're in police custody. You know, it is still the police officer's job to uphold the law to the fullest extent. And it's still the police officer's job to act with integrity and ethics, all right? What happened to that and good principles? Just what happened to just understanding that we are human beings. We have seen videos of police officers who arrest teenage black girls and they're slamming them on the ground and they're jumping on top of them and just a lot of extra things happening just to handcuff a teenage girl who is just not that much of a threat and 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 they are men so you're actually saying that you don't you know you don't even value the black woman you don't know you don't value her at all so we're 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 getting beat not not only that we're also dying right so what happened to sandra bland that is still an issue that has not been taken care of you understand what i'm saying so there's so much you know uh you know eric garner trayvon martin trayvon martin was killed by george zimmerman who was not even a police officer he was just a, a whack what it was a security guard how does he have the authority or you know <laughs> the okay to kill a black person and not get held accountable for it so those are the things that the world is looking looking at and we're just fed up of it Never let anyone let tell you that your protest and your outcry is wrong. Pay attention to the changes that are happening in the world now. And anything that happens as far as martial law, as far as the new world order, understand that those people just organized on top of what you have done. Okay? And if that was their plan, that was they were going to plan that Anyway, whether you protest or not, they were going to use an excuse to plan that. Never let anyone else's plan make you feel guilty because their plan profited off of your action. Your action is needed. Understand that. Don't feel guilty. I want you to be able to go to bed at night and feel okay. All right? What's done is done. We can't change that. We cannot change the cities that has been burning, the buildings that have been burning, the places that have been broken into. We cannot change that. I thank God that Newark, New Jersey, we didn't have to do that in Newark, New Jersey. However, in Newark, we do not have that same issue of police brutality or police officers abusing their authority. And I'm from Newark, New Jersey. We don't have those issues in my city. I can't say in my state, but in my city, we don't have those issues. So our protest was peaceful and without incident. There were people who tried to break into a, to stores or create incidents, but certain fam, uh, certain community members made sure that they prevented that from happening and it didn't happen yet. We were able to protest and make a stance and stand in solidarity with George Floyd's family. George Floyd is not a martyr. We're not 
holding him as the um, as the highest uh, the, a man of the highest respectability. I don't know George Ford's character, and I'm not getting into his character and his background. I'm getting into specifically his death, how J Officer Chauvin killed him, and that Officer Chauvin should not have killed George Form, uh, Floyd. And that goes for any black person who have died in police custody or who have been treated horribly while they're in police custody. That is it. And that is all. I hope you guys have a great afternoon and be well and during these times. And, and you know what? Try to, to not get incited. Um, uh, how can I say incited uh, by all that has been happening? You know, try to remain calm. Try not to let these things um, um, build your pressure because it's a lot that's going on. COVID-19 is still happening. We still need you guys to wear your masks. We still need you guys to get tested. Try not to get sidetracked by any of this that's going on and try not to let it overload you to where it infringe on your peace and your well-being, okay? Be well. Be blessed. Peace.